Hello again, YouTube. My gosh, has it been a busy start to 2024. We spent two and a half weeks in January exploring Oman with our local friend Khalid. And to be honest, the country ended up being my favorite in the Middle East so far. We explored the empty quarter and the Wahiba deserts, the bustling markets of Nizwa and Sinor, and the coastal region spreading from Ras Al Jins to Muscat. Seriously, if you haven't considered visiting Oman, I would highly recommend that you start giving it some thought. It's absolutely incredible. As you can see from the title of this video, I thought I'd give you a rundown on how I make a living as a full-time travel photographer. If you're new here, I'm Jord, and I've been a freelance travel photographer for the past seven years or so, something like that. In that time, I've worked with a whole range of companies, including the likes of Adobe, DJI, Canon, and Etihad Airways, amongst many other things of which I'm gonna cover in this video. How I make a living from all of this is something that comes up daily in my Instagram DMs, so I'm hoping that this video answers that question and gives those of you who are hoping to do the same a little clarity. Now, as you may have imagined, the ways in which I make money today are fairly different from the ways I made money when I was first starting out. So I'm gonna start off with what my photography business looks like in 2024, and then I'm gonna touch on how I got started. Not only that, but there are countless ways of making money as a travel photographer, so what works for some might not necessarily work for others. Some things I enjoy may well be things that you can't stand, and to be honest, that is absolutely fine. We're all on different paths and more power to us. This is just my personal experience as well and it doesn't mean that these are the only ways that photographers make a living. There are many ways photographers make a living in which I do not. And a quick example off the top of my head, I never really delved into stock photography yet I know plenty of other photographers who in part rely on stock photography for a regular monthly income. Anyway, let's dive into how I make a living as a full-time travel photographer. When most people think of travel photography, they often imagine the exciting life of photographers being sent to exotic locations by brands. It's seen as the pinnacle of combining work and passion where you get to create for a brand's marketing campaigns or even promote them on your social media with your photography or maybe your videography as well. But this is not about video. So when I was getting started, I remember seeing a handful of photographers landing jobs like this and sharing the results of the campaigns on Instagram. This inspired me to pursue the same. I continued to dedicate myself to growing my brand on Instagram, honing my skills as a photographer and building a huge database of contact emails to reach out to over and over again until they noticed me and my work. To give you a clearer picture though, let me walk you through a few of the campaigns I've worked on in the past year. So I started off the year, and we're talking 2023, in Singapore with the Singapore Tourism Board with the goal of capturing a few of their heritage neighborhoods, which included Chinatown, Kampong Glam, Katong, and Little India. And this involved licensing a set number of images to the tourism board, as well as posting a set of four Instagram carousels on my feed, as well as daily stories. Following that, I spent the next few months shooting for Marriott hotels in Hong Kong, Sydney, and finally Khao Lak on the southeast coast of Thailand. These projects had strict and intense itineraries and Although a key focus was capturing the hotspots of the destinations in which we were shooting, I was also encouraged to capture the cultural aspects, which as you can imagine, was right up my street. On top of that, the projects with Marriott involved zero social media promotion, which made a very nice change as I am quite discerning about what I share on my social media platforms. For me, my social media is much more than just a tool for promotion. It's a curated space where I showcase my best work, reflecting my vision and creativity. The experience, in my opinion, underscored the importance of aligning with projects that resonate with my personal approach to photography and social media. It was also a nice reminder that in a world where social media presence is often seen as absolutely paramount, that there are still opportunities to create meaningful work that focuses purely on the art and the client's needs rather than on online engagement metrics. Anyway, moving on from the Marriott projects, a few months later, an exciting opportunity came my way as I was commissioned by DJI for the launch of their Mavic 3 Air, or Mavic Air 3. I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, I've worked with DJI on a yearly basis since 2018, and they're good guys. 
This assignment was a pretty dynamic shift from my previous work, blending product photography with content creation for social media. It was a multifaceted project that not only showcased the drone's capabilities through marketing materials on DJI's end, but also leveraged my social media platforms to generate some buzz around the launch. The project involved a mix of creating engaging photo carousels and Instagram reels for my audience, for which I should add that I hired Harry to shoot for me, all of which I think turned out pretty well given the assignment was handed to me on very short notice and that we already had a number of family vacations planned for the time in which we were required to shoot and deliver the content. So after sharing these experiences that I've had with Marriott and DJI, it might seem like commission photography work is the dream career. And I suppose in many ways, it is. These projects offer incredible opportunities to travel, work with prestigious brands, and even flex our creative muscles in a host of ways. However, like any dream, the reality comes with its own set of challenges that aren't immediately visible from the outside. More often than not, these assignments are a race against time. Deadlines are tight, expectations are high, and there is very little room for error. You're not just a photographer, you are, I'd say, more of a problem solver, constantly adapting to unforeseen challenges in the field. Whether it's the weather, playing havoc on your shoot schedule, or technical difficulties with equipment, the pressure to deliver doesn't pause for these hiccups and to be honest, the deadlines just have to be met. Also, one of the most significant constraints can be the limitation on creative flexibility. Working closely with brands means adhering to their vision and guidelines, which can sometimes feel like a tightrope kind of walk between your artistic expression and their commercial objectives. While I'm not necessarily referring to the brands that I mentioned previously, there can be moments when the creative direction feels more like a straitjacket, to put it bluntly, restricting the flow of your creativity and kind of forcing you to navigate within a narrower path than you're typically accustomed to. Then there's the matter of compensation. Money, money, money. The allure of working on high profile campaigns can sometimes obscure the financial realities of these projects. Not every job comes with compensation that matches the effort and the expenses involved. Travel, equipment, and time, all of these things add up and the pay doesn't always reflect the extensive investment of resources and energy. Next up, I wanna discuss digital assets, which has been a huge part of my business in recent years. Selling your own products is a fantastic way to make passive income as a photographer, and nowadays, this is where the majority of my income comes from. I sell digital assets in the form of online courses, bundles, and also presets, and I actually also sell physical prints, all of which are set up to run behind the scenes and to effectively, and hopefully, sell while I'm tucked up in bed at night watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. When I was first starting out, presets were all the rage and just about every photographer on Instagram at the time, I'm talking 2016, 2017, they all had a preset pack for sale. Naturally, I hopped on the bandwagon and decided to sell my preset packs on my own Shopify website as well as on a couple of other third-party websites. I think actually maybe just one, which was filter grade. They sold kind of well and I was able to make a decent passive income from them over an extended period. I don't actually have presets for sale right now, at least exclusively, as they make up a part of the other digital assets that I offer, which I'm gonna to touch on in just a moment. Then, as my audience on Instagram continued to grow, I noticed there were a continuous stream of DMs asking me, how do I do what I do? From the editing side of the business to the business side of the business, people seem pretty keen to learn with me. And with that, I decided to delve into the world of online courses. Now, when I finally decided to put together a course, I was getting pretty burnt out from all the client jobs I was taking on, and I was actually just looking for a way to earn a bit of money without having to constantly travel around the world. So with that in mind, I hired an online course expert, and I built out my very first photography and editing course a few months before the pandemic hit. In all honesty, the timing was incredibly lucky, and as the whole world was required suddenly, you know, to stay at home, the sales from my courses skyrocketed, to be quite honest. I'm unsure if those two things are directly linked, but I have to imagine that in some way they are. With that, I was able to take some much needed time off of client work and focus on something that, to me, at the time was very new and exciting. 
Since then, I have expanded my online course businesses to help photographers from taking photos right the way through to making money as a photographer. Sharing my knowledge is something that I am really passionate about, hence finally starting this bloody YouTube channel. And I'm quite excited to see where this business takes me and my students, of course, in the future. To give you an idea of where the money actually comes from when I'm talking about courses, allow me for a minute to run you through the courses in my online academy. So first up, we have the Travel Photography Accelerator. This was my first photography and editing online course, which I launched back in February 2020, which I refilmed and relaunched last year. I cannot fucking believe it's been four years. That is ridiculous. Then we've got the business of travel photography. This helps photographers develop their online presence and turn their passion for photography into a business. I believe we launched this in September, October 2020, and it is my best-selling course to date. Next up is the Drone Photography Accelerator, a course specifically for drone photography and editing. We launched it a couple of years after my two other courses, and as I found out, the market for such a course is quite niche, and it's not something I am actively promoting anymore, but it still exists. And if you're interested, you can let me know. Also, there's a couple of smaller digital bundles that I have on offer, starting with the Travel Photography Starter Kit. This is basically a beginner's toolkit for basic photography and editing skills. I realized a large proportion of my audience are beginner photographers, uh, so I wanted to find a way of helping to take it up a notch. The last preset pack I created is actually now a part of this starter kit instead of being sold separately. Last but not least, I have the Photography Pitching Bundle, which is for photographers who want to start getting paid photography jobs today, but don't want a full online course. This bundle currently runs exclusively through Facebook and Instagram ads and has been surprisingly successful. I actually outsourced the ad management to an ads specialist. And with that said, actually it's worth mentioning that for me, the bottom line, is that I'm always looking for ways that are gonna allow me to spend more time in the field taking photos. That is the reason I started photography and while things are very much different now compared to 2017 when I was just getting started, I think it's of utmost importance that I find ways to maintain that core focus. It is utterly essential to me that everything I engage in, it doesn't matter if it's launching products like the photography pitching bundle, managing commission projects that I might work on with DJI or Marriott, or maybe even exploring new creative avenues, the ultimate purpose of fueling my passion for photography and enabling me to share that with the world is number one, and I must find time to do this. So outsourcing things like ad management, despite the cost, is a strategic decision that aligns with my vision. It's not only you know, gonna help me to ensure a level of success with my ventures like the bundle, I need to make sure it's profitable enough to justify its existence in my business, but it also allows me to dedicate more time to what I truly love, being out in the field, taking photos, and uh, telling stories with my lens, and sharing it with the world. That's basically what I wanna do. This approach has allowed me to stay true to the reason I started photography back in 2017. Even as the business side of my work has grown and evolved, my heart very much remains with the art of photography itself. And it is just a reminder that success isn't you know, measured by profits necessarily or the clients that you work with or the scale of your business, but by how well you can preserve your passion and share it with others. Yeah, okay, moving on. You know, I also sell prints, and while I can't in any clear conscience call them digital assets, I do sell them online. So yeah, I'm gonna include them in this section. Over the years, I've built up a decent portfolio of photos, and in the process, I had got some odd requests for prints in my DMs. I say odd requests, they're just requests. So anyway, I opened up a print shop, which was on Shopify. I never really promoted these, but they have been available for purchase via my link tree for a couple of years now. To this day, I make a small passive income from prints. Nothing crazy, but it always feels very good when a sale comes in. I think even just last month, I had an order for about $900 of prints from one customer. And if you're watching this, good sir or madam, thank you very, very much. I hope they have added the touch of vibrancy to your home that you were looking for. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these assets are passive income streams. However, they took a lot of time and money to build out. I am by no means an expert on building out online course sales funnels, and so luckily, my partner Soph took this on and now runs this side of the business with the help of a few experts that we've hired to give us a helping hand along the way. 
Okay, last up for how I make money mainly today and my newest venture, which is photography workshops. If I'm being completely honest, this is the side of my business that I enjoy the most, taking a group of like-minded photographers on an incredible trip through one of my favorite destinations and teaching them all that I know in the process. During the pandemic, I was stuck here in Bali for 18 months and although I went a little stir crazy, maybe at times as my travel focused career came screeching to a halt, I realized that I had an opportunity to explore Bali without the tourists and in my own way. This was an opportunity that had never been possible since I had been based here and so I very much took advantage of it. I drove around the island as much as I could with my camera in hand and to be quite honest I fell in love with Bali all over again. And once this period was over I decided that I wanted to show photographers the real side of Bali that I had the fortune of experiencing during that time. And so I organised my first photography workshop. Despite a week of terrible weather the trip was incredible and so I planned for more in the following year. Then after the Bali workshops came Vietnam. I visited a couple of years back and I hired a photography guide for a couple of days to take me to some of the craft villages that were surrounding Hanoi. At the end of the trip I realized that there was a great potential for photography workshops in Vietnam and so you know I put it to my guide that we should get together and make this a reality. My first Vietnam workshop took place in August 2023 and I have two more coming up this year with more to be launched in 2025 and beyond. I should say, as a side note, there are a couple of spots left for my September 2024 Vietnam trip. It's from the 16th to the 26th of September and we're going to be traveling to some of my favorite destinations in North and Central Vietnam. If that sounds of interest to you, then please check out the link in the description and if you have any questions, reach out to me by DM or leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. The reality behind these trips is that they are great fun. I get to meet some great people and travel together and take photos. Honestly, what's more to like than that? I will say though that I am absolutely exhausted after these trips and it usually takes me a couple of days to recover post trip. I understandably have to be switched on 24 seven, not only teaching and answering questions, but also organizing the trips, making sure we make the most out of the conditions in the area, trying to make sure we get enough rest, as well as having a backup plan in case the weather isn't on our side, and even a backup plan to the backup plan in case those plans don't work out. It's obviously a lot of work, but I absolutely love it, and I can't wait to open up more trips to other destinations in the future. So, what can you do if you are just getting started? It's all well and good, me having done this for seven years and having figured a few things out, but if you're just getting started, things are gonna look a little bit different. Well, when I was first starting out, things looked very different for me, as I've mentioned countless times in this video. I mentioned earlier also that I started with commission campaigns pretty early on in my photography career, but there were a few other income streams that were essential in helping to keep me financially afloat. I had to create a portfolio of relevant images, seek out potential companies that seemed to need content for their business, I had to find relevant contact information so I could send my pitch to them, and on top of that, I had to network my arse off, which is something I could and to be quite honest, should cover in an entirely separate video. Anyway, one of the main ways I made money in the beginning was through product photography. Now, this involves taking photos of products for companies for either their marketing campaigns or to promote on social media, maybe even a mix of both. Back then, I would just reach out to companies to take photos of their products on my travels. I ended up backpacking through Asia with a collection of, believe it or not, Christmas socks, a picnic blanket, a couple of watches, and some hiking boots, to name a few. All of which I'd take photos of while I was on any trip, I guess. The company would pay a certain amount per edited photo, and I would have a set number of deliverables per month, which meant I had a stable monthly income from a certain number of companies, which helped to ease my mind massively while I was on the road. I would recommend anyone starting out to try product photography. It's a very easy way to get your foot in the door as you can create a sample of product images from the comfort of your own home. And you can incorporate the deliverables into trips that you already have planned. I mean, you could even shoot them in your local area. God's sake, you could even shoot them in your garden to be quite honest. There are so many ways in which to do product photography without traveling 
the world. Another large part of my earlier photography business model was licensing photos. Now, this is something I still do from time to time, but only if companies reach out to me and the budget is respectable. When I was first starting out, I would actually email travel magazines and travel blogs with a selection of photos that I thought would work with their target audience, along with a small transcript about those photos. This led me to have a few regular jobs with some online travel magazines, and I also managed to license my photos for magazine covers, corporate calendars, books, album covers, and even wallpapers. Funnily enough, I even had my photos licensed for yoga leggings and puzzles. Now, if you've seen a photograph printed on something, then to be quite honest, it's an opportunity to be explored by you. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, this list is by no means exhaustive and there are plenty of other ways to make money as a photographer, such as stock photography, affiliate links, selling other products such as calendars and eBooks. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I am well aware that there is a lot to unpack with this topic, especially if you're just getting started and are looking to become maybe a part-time or even a full-time travel photographer. So if you're interested, I will gladly make a video in the near future covering exactly how you can get started. Also, little self plug, you can also check out my pitching bundle in the description below, which gives you all the tools and templates that you need to start reaching out to clients for paid photography jobs. For now, I hope this video gave you an insight as to how I make money as a photographer seven years into my career, and that this may in some way inspire you to take a chance on doing the same. If you're passionate about photography, are ready to work extremely hard, and I guess most importantly work on taking good photos, then being a freelance travel photographer is an incredibly rewarding career path and can be extremely profitable at the same time as well. Now, if you have any questions about how I make money as a travel photographer, maybe I missed something in this video, then please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And also, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful in any way, then please feel free to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more stuff like this in the very near future. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.